While I'm waiting for the epoxy to harden on the fins and motor mount, I'm going to come back to the payload section. And now I need to make a mark halfway up the uh, coupler here, so it'll be at four inches. I'm going to do this in several spots so that I can draw. Well, I don't really have to draw all the way around. But that way I can just see where it is wherever I'm turning to. Okay. Now, depending on how you decided to put this together, the simplest way is to simply put some epoxy uh, or wood glue, um, because this is not coming into any contact with motor gases and such. So if you're just going to make a simple payload section, you can either use some epoxy or wood glue, put a bead of it along the inside here, and then simply couple these together and put that up to that halfway line, and let that dry, and it's essentially done at that point. Now, I wanted to be able to have a little bit more uh, flexibility in this, so that if I want to later, I can exchange this piece out for an avionics bay. And so what I'm going to do is mark this for some reusable plastic rivets. Now these rivets come in lots of different sizes. Um, I bought these on Amazon. You can also sometimes find them in automotive stores where they're used to attach trim. Uh, several of the rocketry supply stores will also sell smaller uh, numbers of these, so you don't have to buy 50 or 100 of them at a time. So for this one, I am using a 5 by 6.5 millimeter rivet. And I'm going to use three of them on here. There's no real set number that you need, um, but at minimum three or four. And since these are relatively thick, I'm going to do it with just three. And here there's no particular requirement for where these go. Um, you do want to leave enough space so that there is um, strength remaining. So you don't want them right up here near the edge. But you also don't need to have them all the way up the, the whole body tube or so. So I'm going to do mine at about three centimeters from the edge. And so I'm just going to mark this in several places. So that as I go around it later, I'll be able to find where I am. And I'm actually going to wrap this in some paper and draw a circle all the way around it. Okay, so like that. And to wrap this will require a sheet of legal paper regular letter is not going to be quite long enough. Okay, so I'm just going to wrap this around first of all and then match up the edges of the paper here. And that may take a little bit of finessing as we do this. Okay. It's pretty close. Now I'm just going to take some masking tape here and just tack that in place. All right, and now I'm going to scoot it up here until I'm on my tick marks. pretty close. And I'm just going to use this as a guide. Alright, 
Now I'm going to use a flexible measuring tape here and find my circumference. And I'm using the metric scale mainly just because it's finer and frankly easier to work with. Okay, so we've got 33 centimeters all the way around. Okay, so this is going to be to make three holes, I want every 11 centimeters. So 33, and then back here to 22, and then continuing back to 11. Okay, and I'm just going to extend that up a little bit here. Okay, and now I'm going to put this back together and we're going to drill a hole through both the payload tubing and the underlying coupler here. Now I just had a thought that I can also use the rivets to hold the nose cone on to the other end of the payload section. Now I'm not going to drill them right now, uh, but I am going to go ahead and mark the tube. So I'm just going to take my tick marks here and extend them all the way up. And all this is going to do is allow me to match where the rivets are, and it'll just make it look a little cleaner when it's all put together. Um, functionally, it won't make a whole lot of difference whether I have both sets of rivets lined up or not. Okay. So coming back, we'll put this into the installed position. And initially, go ahead and make your hole a little bit smaller than you think it's going to need to be. So we've got a 5 millimeter rivet here. And of course, in the US, it's really hard to find metric drill bits. Right, so I've got just plain old fractional drill bits here. But what we can do is simply directly measure these against the drill bit. And keep in mind these are flared out a little bit, um, and that's what holds them in place. So if we pull the stem out a little more here, and squish these down, so 11 sixty-fourths, maybe a 3 sixteenths. It looks like it's just slightly smaller than the rivet, so that's what we're going to use. So there's my first hole, and so now I'm just going to take one of my rivets here and poke that in. Okay, and it should be snug, and it is. Okay, I'm just going to kind of wiggle that in, and then I'm going to press down on the top of it here, and that's going to push it in and then lock it. Okay, and then to take it out, you may need to take like a pocket knife blade to reach under here to pry that back up. Um, but that's on there nice and strong, and that's what we want. Okay, uh, let's see if I can get this up where we can look down the tube. Okay, and you can just see the nub of it right down there. And that's where we want it. it. Should the expanding part here should be just inside the cardboard, so that as it expands, it actually pushes backward on the cardboard. Now you might need to try um, a little bit longer or shorter length, but these are these are the the five by six point five millimeter. And those look like right about the right length. Now when I do this for the nose cone, 
I will probably need to have longer rivets because it's going to have to go through a little bit more space um, on the plastic of the nose cone. And there's going to be probably a little bit of a gap depending on where they get put in. Okay, now if you don't want to do uh, rivets for the nose cone, then you just use some masking tape to make sure it's really snugly in place there. So I'm going to take the uh, payload section back off camera, put the other two uh, holes in, and then put their rivets in as well. I've drilled all of my holes and test fit the uh, rivets, and then I took them back out again. I'm going to take this back apart. Okay, if we look in here, we do get this kind of a ridge that's raised up, and that's due to the drill. And that's not too bad there, but inside the coupler, it's a bit more ragged. And so what I'm going to do is put a little super glue on that, let it dry, and then I'll file that down or sand it down to give a cleaner edge when we go to put the rivets back in. And that will also help prolong the life of the cardboard um, as the rivets are being put in and taken out again. Okay, so I'm just going to put this right on the inside edge here, and it will wick into the cardboard, especially where it's been disturbed by the drill. Okay, and I'll just do that all the way around. So all nice and super glued there. And I'll just set that aside and let it dry normally. Okay, and I can do the same thing here. Uh, because I'm probably going to want to sand these little raised areas down uh, for a couple of reasons. One is just to have a, a low profile as much as possible. Uh, and again, the, having that ridge there is going to wear the more times we take the rivets on and off. And so the super glue will stiffen that up and I can just sand them flat. Okay. We'll look inside here, make sure everything also. Okay, that one looks good. That one needs a little bit more. Okay, so we just want some super glue all the way around that. So Although it's not completely cured, the interior epoxy is cured enough that we can work with this now. Uh, I did notice I got a little drip of, of epoxy there that I missed. Um, I will take a hobby knife and shave most of that off and then sand it. It's a little bit of work, but not a big deal. But there's a good chance we may have a, a little bit more to do um, as we do the fillets here next. So for the fin fillets, I want to use 5 minute epoxy because I don't want it to have a lot of time to run. But we'll do this in small batches. Okay, I've made up a small amount of 5 minute epoxy here. And in case you're wondering where I'm getting these applicators, these are wood coffee stirring sticks. They're just little flat pieces of wood and they work really well for this. And what I want to do is we're going to put the fillets on one fin at a time, both sides. So I've got this nice and stirred up. Now, I want to try and lay this in as accurately as possible. I don't want to be as sloppy as I was on the interior. And the extent to which you do this is largely a matter of preference. So some people like, like really thick, rounded fillets. Others, like myself, generally prefer thinner fillets that fill in the, the edge here, but don't really add a lot of mass to the rocket. And the pros and cons to both, the thick fillets are more aerodynamic. Some say they're more aesthetically pleasing, um, but they are heavy. Whereas a, a smaller fillet uh, may not look quite as, as nice and rounded, but they also don't add a lot of weight to the rocket. Yeah, a little sloppy there. We'll clean that up here in just a moment. 
popsicle sticks work really well for this too if you have a lot of those laying around. Now we have to work really quickly. Okay, so I've tightened up my gloves here and I'm going to coat them with rubbing alcohol. And now I'm just going to use my finger to smooth in this fillet. Just like that. And then have some tissue ready to wipe off the excess epoxy. And here I'm also going to wipe off this bit here. I'm just going to turn this around and do the same thing again. And this, you do have to do it fairly quick because you want the, the epoxy to be just a little bit set up, but not stiff yet. Again, if we've got some excess here, I'll just wipe that off. Okay. So a little bit of buildup up here on the top of the fin, so I'm just going to give this a wipe all the way down to even that out. Right. The other part looks pretty good. So I will let this cure for a few minutes. And then once it's to the point where it's not going to flow anymore, um, I will do the other two fins off camera and then come back. My fin fillets are completely cured. And now we need to attach the rail buttons. Now this kit is obviously an update uh, in that the original had a quarter inch launch lug instead. But the instructions do not reflect that change. It's, the instructions still indicate a launch lug. And so the, the kit did come with two rail buttons here. These have got a lot of flash on them though, so it's going to require a little bit of trimming. And so here, let's see if we can get this in focus here. Alright, so you can see this flash here um, from where the, the mold came off. Um, these are not the best rail buttons I've ever seen, but we can fix them easily. You just take your hobby knife and carefully trim these around. And even if you whoop, even if you gouge these a little bit, it won't really hurt them. Um, it's more important that we take that flash off. Now I'm going to be careful here that I don't hit my thumb. It's kind of hard to do this, especially if you have big fingers. need to use a little bit of sandpaper on this. Now even though it may look like I'm trying to cut my thumb, it's actually a below the knife here. Okay, and some people like to mount these so that the rail buttons actually are free to turn. Um, you don't need to do that. It gives you a little less friction on the launch rail, theoretically at least. Especially these rail buttons where they have so much flash and so many seams on them. They're probably not going to rotate that well to begin with. Now what came with the kit were two sets of screws here. So we've got some wood screws and some machine screws with nuts. And you can use the wood screws 
um, mainly if you're going to put this into one of the centering rings. And so, for example, we could, for the rear, is drill a hole here where it will go into the edge of the centering ring and then put in a wood screw. And so this would look like this. And so this, the actual part that goes into the wood does not go very deep. Um, you can also use the machine screws here. All right, so this would fit like this. And then we would drill a hole through uh, someplace that's got an inside edge. Okay, and then that would be held in place by a nut. Uh, and then once that nut is in place, I would go ahead and um, epoxy that as well. Now, the problem, you know, down here at the, the bottom, that's fine. At the aft end, you could use either one of these because they're not going to interfere with anything down there. The problem is going to occur when we get up here on the other end. Uh, first of all, you need to make sure that this is mounted far enough down here, because remember our um, coupler here is going to go down this far on our launch lug line. So that the rail button needs to be below that. But then if you just take this the way it is and stick it on there, that's going to stick in to the uh, body tube space and potentially could hang up um, the parachute and the shock cord during ejection and cause a, a bad recovery. Now an option here is to use this. This is a T-nut. This did not come with the kit. I bought these separately. Um, and what you'll have to do is get a slightly smaller screw. So I believe this is a number eight machine screw. You'll need a number six. But this particular uh, T-nut size, the shank of it here fits inside the rail button. And then you can simply put a screw through this. And the idea here is to use a screw that is short enough that after it's threaded in here, it does not poke out past the base of the T-nut here. And then this is very easily epoxied over to give a nice smooth finish on the inside that won't um, get caught on the, the shroud lines or the shock cord or things like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the um, regular machine screw and nut down at the, the aft end of the rocket and then I'll use the, the T-nut up at the forward end. Okay, so I'm going to come back to my launch lug line here. And as you'll recall, the halfway point on our coupler here is at four inches. Okay, so that means we need to be at least four inches down. I'm going to give myself an extra inch here. So I'm going to place mine at five inches. So I shouldn't have any interference um, with my recovery system once this is all in place. And it doesn't have to be exact. We just want to make sure it's below the level of where the coupler is going to be. Okay, and then at the motor end here, um, I'm going to have my nut just inside here. Okay, so I'm just going to have to drill a hole right above the edge. And again, since this isn't going to be sticking into anything critical, turn this around here, um, if there's a little bit of the, the screw sticking through this, it's not a big deal. Uh, I will probably go ahead and trim the screw so that it, we don't have a lot sticking out and to save, you know, half a gram of weight or so. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drill these and then I'll come back. I drilled the holes and attached the rail guides here. So on the aft end, I simply used 
the machine nut that came with the kit. And I have not epoxied either one of these yet because I'm going to take these back off again when I go to paint the rocket. And then the other one here on the forward end, this is held in place using that T-nut I showed. Now, if you're using the T-nuts the or something that didn't come with the kit, it may vary a little bit on how big the hole you, you need. Uh, for this one, the aft end, I used a 5 seconds inch drill. And for the forward one, an 11 64ths. As I said, the, the 5 seconds should work fine if you're using what came with the kit. If you're using the T-nut, it may vary depending on the size of, of the uh, shank of the nut. Okay, but those are on. And the last thing we need to do here is install the recovery system. My kit came with this um, 3 8 inch wide flat nylon shock cord. It has end loops sewn into it already. And the nice thing about this being a 4 inch kit and relatively short for the main body tube is that I can reach down inside here and actually do all this after the motor mount has been installed. So I moved the body over to a chair here and we're looking down it. And to put the shock cord in, okay, all we have to do is take the loop end here, feed it through the screw eye down here. So here I have the shock cord fed through that loop. Now keep in mind um, this is relatively thin and nylon is not fireproof. So over time this will degrade if you launch this rocket a lot. And you may want to consider either replacing this with a Kevlar shock cord and or um, covering the, the interior part with a Nomex uh, cord protector. Okay, But since this is such a nice wide model, you can do that later. Um, you know, I've got fairly big hands and I'm still able to get my hand down there, uh, manipulate the shock cord and everything, and then feed it through and back again. All right, so now what I've done is I've taken the other end that also has a loop on it. I'm going to feed that through the original loop that I put through the eye hole. And now I'm just going to feed this all the way through and then cinch this down inside the body tube and onto that eye, eye bolt. Okay, and just snug that down there. Now again, if you want to, if you're going to use a Nomex um, cord protector here, now would be the end time the time to install that. Okay, so then all this can just feed back in, um, at least for general storage here. And now this other end will attach to the eye bolt on the payload section. Our final step is to install the parachute and there are a couple of ways to do this. Now you will need at very minimum at least one quick link and these are not included with the kit. Um, what I'm going to show you here requires two quick links and a barrel swivel. Now all of these, um, the quick links you can find in sporting goods and in hardware stores. The barrel swivel, I got this from a uh, fishing store uh, and it's, it's used for really heavy duty like deep water fishing things like that. Um, the, the little tiny snap swivels that you've seen me use on model rockets are not heavy enough for this particular job. Uh, many of the rocketry retailers also sell these in small packages, uh, both the uh, swivels and the quick links. Okay, uh, our parachute here, nice nylon parachute, has very long shroud lines. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to do here first is just find 
the common point here where we got all of where we have all of the shock lines at the same length. So I'm just passing these through my fingers here, keeping some friction on them so they don't move. Okay, and then here I'm going to gather up these loops. And what we want to do is just have some way to keep these all together so they don't change lengths again. Um, one thing you can do is just put an overhand knot somewhere up along there. Okay, what I'm going to do here is feed these all through my swivel. And then I'm going to pass the swivel through the knot. And then pull those taut. Now this is going to, will have a tendency to try and slip up. Um, and if that happens, it'll loosen up enough that the shroud lines can change where their position is. So you may get an imbalance that causes your parachute to drift or spin. Uh, so what I like to do then is take a piece of electrical tape and wrap this right above the knot there. Uh, I'm going to save that for now. Uh, but that's uh, one good way to, to do this. Uh, another way you can do this is, is do the knot like I showed and then put um, a length of say uh, six inches to a foot of either nylon cord or Kevlar cord um, between the loops and the swivel here. Okay, so however you do it, you want one end attached to the swivel. Now, if you don't have a swivel, you can simply tie it to the end of the shock cord here. Now, the shock cord is something else. Uh, there are a couple of ways to mount this. According to the instructions, uh, what they have you do is just tie this on about three feet down. Um, so you just use a couple of half hitches or something here to tie this to the eye bolt. Uh, the problem is any place you do have a knot that provides a, a, a weak point within that, so I try to avoid knots as much as I can. Um, you can put a knot in this, but I would suggest doing it a little bit different way. And this is a matter of preference. Okay, You don't have to do it my way. So what they're showing in the um, instructions for this is tying this on here at about three feet down, like I just showed you there and then using a, a quick link here then to tie on to the parachute um, if you don't have the snap tool then tying it on to the base of the loop there so I'm going to tie this like this okay and then I close that down um, and that way you can do this with just one quick link and that's it um, if you don't have the swivel on there okay now like I said um, my personal preference is to go down about a foot on here, or not a foot, about three feet on here, um, and either sew a loop in here, which is preferred, or you can tie a water knot and make a loop in that. So this is where you just take the loop into an overhand knot, like this. And I'm not going to cinch this down too much. Okay. And then here, depending on your personal preference, you can either attach your loop from here to here. All right, now, aha, found out another problem here. Um, if you're going to link into this one, you're going to need a bigger quick link than what I've got. This is an eighth inch quick link. You'll probably need a three sixteenths or a quarter inch quick link. Um, not because you need that kind of robustness, but it's the only way you can get the mouth to fit over this. Okay. But normally I would do um, a link here, and I actually prefer to put the end of the shock cord up here. So again, I would need a bigger quick link, and I put my quick link um, that's down on the parachute. Now the reason I do this is now when it's, the parachute's coming down, this all up. All right. But when this is hanging from the parachute, all right, 
right, so it's hanging like this. And then hanging off the short end here, I would have the upper section of the rocket. And then it will be dangling below the parachute, but above the main body of the rocket. And this just keeps all the pieces from bonking into each other all the time. Okay. Um, a third way that you could do all this, and this is not the way I prefer, um, but you can simply tie everything into the eye bolt here. So you can use a single quick link, no knots or sewing in the, in the uh, shock cord, and you just It'd be like the way most model rockets are, where the shock cord and the parachute are tied into the nose cone. Um, I don't like doing that with really big rockets because it tends to make them spin as they come down. Okay, But however you decide to, to do that, just make sure that everything is secure. They do not recommend putting epoxy on the end of the shock cord um, where it attaches to the motor mount. Some manufacturers do, uh, but especially in this case where there's enough room in it that you can get down in there with your fingers, this just allows you to change things out. And since you are looping the shock cord through itself, there's no reason that it would come undone. Now, I can't fit this whole thing underneath the camera, but this is the completed rocket. So we have the uh, nose cone here, and I have um, already sprayed this with the uh, special plastic adhering primer and re-sanded that. Okay, and then we have our payload section here. All right, the hole there is for where the, the rivets are going to go in. And then as we move on down, there's our forward rail button. And back here, our aft rail button. Um, I have not returned the, the Z-clip to the motor mount, but everything here is all finished. I am going to paint and finish this off camera. There are lots of good painting videos out there. So at this point, I am going to call this video done. And I hope you had fun building this rocket. Have a safe launch and a safe recovery, and you'll see me on the next video.